I had two orders for domino sets and one for beach theme chess set and since I've done several tutorials on both products I decided to browse a few of my mentors uh, folks that I occasionally follow on YouTube to get some new ideas for some new products Leah Dia designs does some absolutely stunning and incredibly beautiful work and she had a cute little video on creating a three-piece thinker statue set. So I thought it would be kind of fun to, to change my rhythm a little bit and create something completely new for my shop. So if you want to see how I created this three-piece thinker statue set, keep watching. Again, hello gentle people. Whether this is your first time visiting my channel or you are a returning subscriber, welcome to this Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. I hope you'll find inspiration here and create something beautiful. I'm Hazel, a retired educator turned resin artist, and of course I love the word entrepreneur. And every week I share how I create the products that are available in my Etsy shop. As always, if you like what you see but you don't want to take the time to make it yourself, please feel free to purchase it at Sparrow Art Vibe Shop on Etsy. In fact, you can pause the video and scan the QR code on the screen to actually visit my shop. And if this video inspires you and you like my presentation, please like, comment, that's, you know, feedback, ask a question, uh, whatever share with other like-minded creatives and of course if you're not a subscriber please subscribe so let's get started on this new project and take a look at the materials that we need to make this contemporary three-piece thinker statue set okay gentle people let's take a look at the materials we need to make our thinker statuettes. So the package came with three molds. They look like this. Uh, and there's thinker one. There's thinker two. And there's thinker three. Interesting that they have these big pedestals that they sit on. So our three silicon molds. And we need our resin. So we are using the Moss Envirotex Light. This is the Part A resin. This is the Part B hardener. I am going to be using two measuring cups. Depending on what you have, you can probably only use one. But I have my large measuring cup there my small measuring cup there, my nitro gloves, six stir sticks, and then for mica powders I am going to be using the May Spring Purple Amethyst. This is such a rich, rich color. I'll turn those guys that way. So I have room. The Eye Candy Imperial Gold. The Eye Candy Oriah Gold. For some bling, we're going to be adding this uh, Lavender Crushed Glass. And what's left of my Gold Crushed Glass. Gee, don't want to spill that. Well, something like that. I forgot my paper cups. We need six paper cups. 
And then when we finish everything, we need our DecoArt gloss varnish. And I believe that's it. <clears throat> Before we get started, I want you to take a look at that. This is basically 100 milliliters of wasted resin. Wasted. Dollar bills, baby. Wasted resin. I um, normally don't have my phone in the studio when I am working because it's so easy to get distracted uh, and forget what you're doing. This resin has a shorter working time than my other resin. I was expecting a phone call, uh, went and answered the call. Uh, when I came back and went to port, this is what I found. This is what I found. So I'm sharing that to say, <clears throat> okay, I'm sharing that to say that when I did the uh, materials, I said I was using a large measuring cup and a small measuring cup. These molds, um, these molds each take 60 milliliters of resin, and there are three molds, so six times three is 18. There is not a 180 on here. Um, so the reason I said I was using the large and the small is because I would mix um, the 100 in this and then the 80 in this pour them together. However, uh, as I'm reminded that I made this mistake, I am now going to pour each of these molds separately. So I will be pouring 60 one time, 60 a second time, 60 a third time. So if, if you wanna just pour the whole 180 at one time, by all means do so. Uh, you work what works best for you. But having just wasted all of this, I just don't want to risk mixing a whole bunch at once and then having it start to set. The working time on this is 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and it's warm in this room. I think it's about 80 in here. So this sets a little bit faster. But so yeah, when I um, get ready to mix this and I do this three times, that's the reason why I'm not just like I don't know the word, persnickety or something. I just don't want to have this happen again. And so I always mark my measuring cups. You can't really see it on here because these are new cups. And let me just, you can see the difference. Let me see. You can see the difference between a new cup and the old cup. The old cup's kind of yellow. Let me see. Yeah, the old cups, the old cups start to yellow, so you can tell this is the oldest, the next, and the next. Um, so my markings are not staying on my cups. Uh, when people have problems with their resin not setting correctly, more often than not, it's because they did not measure accurately. Um, sometimes it's like the temperature in the room, it might be the humidity, there are a variety of things that affect how resin cures, but accurate measuring is the most important. And so there is no way for me to accurately measure 50 because there's not a 25 and 25. So I'm just going to do 60. As always, I remind you to follow the manufacturer's instructions. We again are using the Moss Envirotex Light Epoxy. And their instructions tell us we have a 20 to 30 minute work time. That's how I let that stuff set and wasted that resin. Uh, 8 to 12 hour tack free, 72 hour cure. Um, but we are going to measure out equal amounts of side A and side B, which gives us a one to one mixing ratio. Uh, it says mix thoroughly for four to six minutes. So we're going to go right smack in the middle and do five. And then of course it tells you to use your um, resin immediately. We are going to pour 30 milliliters of the part B hardener. and 30 milliliters of the Part A resin. And we
we know that we have a five minute mix. So we're going to take our first little guy here. Um, it's funny because this is like deep right here. And I looked at this thinking, do I need a deep pour resin? But I think it's thin enough that I don't even have to worry about that. So the first thing we are going to do is some gold. So I am going to pour some gold in here. And this is for my glass. Where's my gold glass? And this gold glass is going in the head. What is that? And it doesn't have to be solid, uh, but we do. And I always, um, I always mix my, that must be just mirror on that. That must be just that mirror. I always mix my um, glitter, glass, whatever my embellishment is, I mix it in resin first to make sure that all of the, um, mirror. That must be like the back of the mirror or something. What is that? That's like three of those. All right, so we are going to, I am going to, um, I am looking for my little piece of wood because I want to slant this to make sure that the glass stays in the head part. And I don't mind it coming down some, but I want to make sure that that does not run down so much. Uh, and it's running more than I want it to run. Okay, and then the rest of the resin, we are going to make gold. And so I'm adding, uh, some of the imperial gold. And to the imperial gold, I'm also adding the Araya gold because you can see the imperial gold is really pretty. That's a nice gold, but the Araya gives it, will give it some sparkle. This Araya gold is absolutely beautiful. This Araya gold will give it some sparkle. And I seem to have a lot of resin left in here. So I'm going to pour resin out of this cup. resin is sitting here I'm gonna pour some of that out too that's a lot of resin again having not used these before these are new molds so I'm going to just mix that yeah I love the Oriya gold it gives it it makes it um, like glints of gold. All right, so now I'm simply going to pour this in here.
Okay, and then we're going to push this gold, push the rest of this gold glitter. We're going to push that because that's stuck at the bottom of the cup. So we're going to push that. And it has resin in it, so it will make the other move. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Alright. Yep, that's how we want it. And then the rest of the gold. our gold and we're going to set him right there and then we're going to repeat the process I'm going to mix another 60 so that's 30 of the hardener of the Part A resin. Again, we have a five minute we have a five minute mix. So we are going to repeat the same process. I'm going to take two cups here. And I'm going to put some lavender glass, crushed glass. And pour just enough resin. Oops, 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 oops. To cover my crushed glass. Some dust in there. I don't know where that came from. All right. Okay, and again, my little piece of wood to angle that. And that looks like I need some more. Let's see. That looks good. And then we are going to pour the rest of our resin into this cup. And we are going to add our purple amethyst mica powder. This is so rich, you only need just a dab of this. And it's a purple purple. Some purples look sort of bluish. Some purples look more reddish. This is a purple purple. that a little deeper and add a little bit more yeah I guess that's once it's once it's in the mold
Okay, so let's just get our purple poured in here. And you, if you look at any of my videos, you might notice I use glass much more than glitter. Um, I think glass gives a more elegant look than glitter does. Um, and the other part with glitter is when I use glitter, I always wind up with glitter in another project two or three weeks later it seems to like just stay in the air I don't care how much I vacuum how much I clean I always wind up with glitter um, somewhere I don't want it all right I think that's it our last guy here is going to be purple and gold so we need our measuring cup again. 30 milliliters of our Part B hardener. Thirty milliliters of our Part A resin. We have our five minute mix time. Okay, so this time I'm not actually going to use the wood. I don't need the wood because this is going to be both colors. So we're going to take that gold cup that we already had and we're going to take our purple. These are the cups that we already used. So we don't need to use new cups. And we're going to pour some gold, some resin into this cup and some resin into this cup. And you can kind of approximate um, if it's half, equally half. I'm not really looking to do exact halves. All right, and so we need our um, purple amethyst in this cup. going to do our golds in this one again that's the imperial gold and some Araya gold okay and so all we're going to do is pour both of these into this mold. And so I'm pouring, let me turn it sideways so I can do what I'm trying to do. I'm pouring the purple at the bottom. And the gold at the top. Guess what? This mold takes more than ooh, 
this mold is deeper than the other molds. Oh, I am shy some resin. Look at that. I did not realize this mold was not the same amount as the other molds. Oh, I need to add a little resin to this. Okay, that I did not anticipate. I did not pour. This looks like it needs another 10. Well, it's hard to pour, it's hard to mix 10 milliliters. So I am going to mix another 20 milliliters. Uh, this mold is, di is um, deeper than those. First time I've done this. So we're just going to mix 20 milliliters, uh, 20 more milliliters. So again, so those take, these two take 60. This one takes more. I don't know why I made the assumption that these were, I guess because the first two were the same, I thought the third one was the same. And you see, I was wrong. All right, so we are simply adding to these. And I don't know if this this pad is making a difference. Um, you know my table's not level. Let's put a stick under there and see if that makes a difference. So I'll have to, I don't even know what these look like on the other side. But what we do know is the first two take 60 and this one takes 80. So I have to change that in my instructions. Ooh, I didn't see that. Ooh, look at that, guys. Did you all see that? Oh, that's weird. Um... did not notice that that was running out on that side. Oh, this is a weird kind of mold. Okay, so you get to see me make the mistakes so you don't make them. I did not notice that running out over there. So now we're just going to um, use our heat gun to pop our air bubbles. Okay. Alright, we are done. So let me cover these. Uh, actually, make sure this glass is beneath. We don't want any glass poking up. Alright, and so we will cover this and allow this to cure about uh, six to eight hours. And then we can unmold.
I am back. It has been some, I don't know, it's been a while. These should be cured. Let's take the cover off of here. All right, and let's get rid of my little sticks. And this is always the fun part when you're working with molds is you don't know what you're going to get until you unmold it. So let's see what we're talking about here. I want you to see how that looks, how that looks in the mold. You can see how deep, how that's deep, but okay, let's, let's try and get this out of here. It's not difficult to, to unmold, it's just this is odd because you've got this deep part at the end down here. Let's see. Okay, so that's the back side, and let's turn it over and see. Oh, he's pretty. That's beautiful. And see how shimmery the gold is when you add the Araya gold to the Imperial gold? And let's see, will he sit by himself? Sure. All right. So let's do the purple one. So that's the back side and the reveal. That's the front. I like that. And let's do our last one that's both colors. This was the one that I had to add the extra resin to because this is not 60 milliliters. This is actually 80 milliliters. We had to add to this one. Come out, come out, come out. Alrighty, so that's the back of that one. And the great reveal. And that's the front. So if I were putting these on a table, I would probably order them like so. I like that. Oh yeah, I like them. So let's get them finished up. So you know I always sand my edges. I used to use that deburring tool, but I sand now. So we're gonna sand these, varnish these, and add our rubber bumps. Now I turn this off because I want to say this. Um, we put the crushed glass in here, and so when you reach, when you touch the back of this, you want to make sure that you don't have any glass sticking up. And I have a couple of, um, I have a couple. I don't know. Can I get it on camera? Let me see. Let me see if I can get this so you can actually. this so you can see yeah there you can see that that's not smooth right there got a couple little bumps we're gonna sand down and on this one as well let me see yeah there you can see there you can see the glass sticking up. So and right, right there and right there. So we're gonna sand that down just to be nice and safe. All 
right, so we're just going to get rid of the resin dust that's on these. I like these. Now, there were some like little micro bubbles along the edge. So before I put the varnish on here, I'm just going to take my toothbrush and just rake that. Basically sweep that dust out of those little micro bubbles. Yeah, little tiny bubbles. There's a song called Tiny Bubbles. All right. So while I have these like this, I'm going to go ahead and put the rubber bumps on before I do the varnish. Where are my rubber bumps? All right, and I use 3M, uh, 3M rubber bumps. These are the little tiny ones. Uh, they are clear. They are non-skid. They protect the furniture. So we're going to put two on the back here and one on the front there. Perfect. And then this, we're going to put one here, one here. if I can get away with three. Ooh, probably not, let me see. The problem with these is once they're on, they're hard to get off. These are so hard to, they, I mean, they're, this, this is like a permanent adhesive. Let's try that. Okay, I don't know if that's the table or if it's the positioning of those feet of my rubber bumps. But again, you see I have three on here. I may have to put two on here. Let's, before this gets stuck real good, let's Okay, well you were stand they were standing before I put the rubber bumps on. Okay, I may have to adjust the placement of those bumps. Anyway, right now what we're going to do is finish this off with our um Deco Art Duraclear gloss varnish. And so we're just going to give this a good shake. Squeeze a little bit of varnish into this cup. I mean, that's all we're talking about, just a little bit. And then we are going to paint these edges that I sanded. And I'll reposition the bumps once this has, uh, once the varnish is dried. And that doesn't take but about 10, 15 minutes this dries quickly and this is permanent it is indoor for indoor and outdoor use and again if you don't have if you don't have the varnish you can use um, clear nail polish but again the varnish works better because that's what it's designed for bubbles. The little tiny bubbles along the edge here.
there's a song called Tiny Bubbles. Tiny bubbles in the wine makes me feel happy, makes me feel fine. Tiny bubbles in the wine makes me happy, makes me feel fine. Tiny bubbles makes me warm all over, makes me warm all over. Yeah, well, obviously I can't sing. Makes me warm all over with the feeling that I'm gonna love you till the end of time. Somebody, one of the viewers may be familiar with that song, but clearly I am not a vocalist. I'll stick to resin. This is what I do well. Yeah, these are cute. sand this it leaves a white leaves a white edge that looks white Let me see. and if you varnish it let's see if I can do this so you can see the difference The varnish completely. You see white, you see white here, but it's purple there. The varnish completely gets rid of that white. So that's why I do that. And interestingly enough, um, where am I? I'm on this side. A lot of my resin techniques have been learned from uh, guys who do resin with wood. Uh, the river tables and that kind of thing. So there are a couple of guys that I have watched online and I really like the quality of their work and these are the kinds of things that they do to finish off their work. And they, a couple of guys, when you sand this then put the varnish on it and it just eliminates that's sanded. You can't even tell these have ever been sanded. That's how I learned about the deburring tool from a guy doing um, woodworking and resin. All right. I think we are done. Just making sure I'm getting in all those little, there were some real tiny micro bubbles along the edge. Let them dry and then we'll stand them up and make sure they do stand that I don't have to adjust the uh, rubber bumps and if I do then I'll just have to use some uh, super glue because the adhesive on this once you pull it off it's hard to put back on. Mm -hmm. 